This is James McKillis, the fighting cowboy. You watching the RSR video email bag show with Bad Brad Berkeley. It's a knockout. Hi, this is Ray Boom Boom Mancini, and you're watching RSR video email bag show with your host, Bad Brad. Now, at this point, Bad Brad wants me to say, forget about it, but I'm not going to say it because it's stupid. I mean, come on now. Brad, what are you doing? You think you're some half-assed wise guy or what? So I'm not saying it, okay? Forget about it. I'm not saying it. Hi, this is Sean O'Grady. You're watching the RSR video email bag show with Bad Brad. Forget about it. Hello, this is Jackie Lopez, and you are watching the RSR video email bag show with Bad Hi. Brad. Hi, this is Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. And you're watching the Ringside Report video email bag show with my main man, Bad Brad Berkwit. Forget about it. Out of the tree, me plum. You came along and everything. Started into hum. Still, it's surreal, but that the best is yet to come. Hey, folks, welcome back to another show. Now, it snowed last night, and it snowed the night before here in Maryville. I know, I hear you say it. Indiana, where we're doing the show temporarily while we build a house in Cedar Lake. So four or five inches of snow, three, four or five inches of snow, forget about it. But hey, I'm here, we're back. I told you I'm catching up and I am. So trying to do these shows as frequently as I can. The only issue that I have, and if you notice, I've cut some stuff out of the show, is that the freaking internet in the apartment that we're staying at, oh, sweet tunado, it's so freaking slow. I could go back to New York City, come back and the show is still loading, forget about it. All right. I want to welcome all my new subscribers to the show. And I want to remind you that when we hit 1,300 subscribers, we're going to give away this great book autographed by Ernie, the Acorn Shavers. And all you have to do is hit that button, hit that button, hit that button, and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you want to be on my next show, send your questions into Ringside Report 2014 at Gmail. Dot com. Again, that's Ringside Report 2014 at gmail.com. Now, without further ado, forget about it. Let's get into your great questions. This snowy day, and it's actually sunny here in Maryville, Indiana. First up, Bad Brad, how about my Eagles, buddy? I am on cloud nine. Did you watch the game, and what did you think? Also want to ask you if there were ever any football players who stepped into the ring and how they did. Bobby T from Philadelphia, PA. Well, Bobby T, welcome to the show all the way from Philadelphia, PA, pal. I hope you were one of those Mama Lukes that acted like a Mama Luke and was flipping cars over and stuff because I don't believe in that type of crap. That's ridiculous. You could party, shoot firecrackers off and do that stuff, but come on. All right, it's ridiculous. And uh, I'm not one for it. But anyways, congratulations to your Eagles. I thought it was a great game. I was rooting for the Eagles. They're not my team. Dallas Cowboys is my team. Okay? I do think that Bill Belichick, as I said on Facebook, is a jack-off. He's a jerk. And I think Tom Brady is an asshole for not shaking the Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia Eagles uh, quarterback Foley's, Foles, or however you say his name. What a, what a jackass he is, too. So, forget you guys. You lost. You're sore losers, and that's, that's pitiful. Okay? Now, great game. And again, congratulations. Dallas, though, is my team. There were a couple. I'm going to give you two off the top of my head. Ed Too Tall Jones, who was a defensive player for the uh, Dallas Cowboys during my time when I really followed football, which I don't really follow anymore. Dead one watch Super Bowl, so being the you know nice guy that I am, forget about it. I watched the whole game with her, but she stayed on Facebook. Yeah, Deb, I'm going to put you out there. She watches the game like this. Yeah, because she's got it. She's hi. My name is Deb, and I'm addicted to Facebook. But hey, what it is what it is. So, Ed Tutal Jones, defensive player, when I followed it, like I said back in the day, I think he went 6-0. I think it might have been six knockouts, whatever, but he fought very, very weak opposition. The other one 
more recently in the last 20 years is Mark Gaston off with Chuck. Forget about it. Fixed fights, absolute joke, couldn't box. Forget about it. So there's two. I'm sure there's many, many more, but those are two off the top of my head. And they both fought in the heavyweight division. All right, there, uh, Bobby T from Philly. Again, one more time, congratulations to the Philadelphia Eagles. I love seeing underdogs, no matter who it is, in boxing, in any sport, football included, win a championship. So, hey, congratulations again. Next up, Bad Brad, longtime fan of your show. And nobody, I mean, nobody calls it more honestly than you do when it comes to your viewers' questions. Well, thank you, pal. I want to ask you, do you think that do you think that 15 rounds will ever come back to boxing? I miss those days, and I think 13 or 15 were the true championship rounds. Terry B. from Manassas, Virginia. Oh, Manassas, Virginia. I used to live in Woodbridge, Virginia, and I used to go to Manassas quite a bit. I absolutely agree with you. You're preaching to the choir. 13 to the 15 were the championship rounds. Forget about it. They stopped it because of safety reasons, which there's people on both sides of the fence that have their arguments, and some of them are valid, and some of them just blow and win. But I feel, as a boxing guy now, this is my 43, 43rd year uh, in and around the sport of boxing, my 21st as a boxing writer, three years as an amateur, 80 to 83, and I started in 75, thanks to my late father, Alvin Burke. Now, I would like to see it come back because I agree, 13 or 15 championship rounds. You had so many titles, won and lost. Look at Mike Weaver, John Tay, 15 rounds. Weaver's losing, knocks Tate out, bada bing, bada boom. He's out cold, face down. Aaron Pryor, Alexis Sarguello, my favorite uh, fight of all time. My number one, Aaron Pryor, against my number two, Alexis Sarguello. Remember that one, 13th round knockout, a very competitive, great, great fight. I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. <laughs> but let's me forget about it. Ooh, I just came in with some groceries from the store, so. No, Deb, I'm not taking the medicine. Leave me alone. So, yes, I would like to... Excuse me, I'd like to see them come back. All right, on that note, with the sneeze, and I'm not taking a medicine, Deb, and shooting from Maryville, Indiana. We're going to take a short. Hey, hey folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkeley. And I am the host of the RSR Video Email Bag Show on the Ringside Report Web TV channel. Now, if you want to advertise on my show, Send your business inquiries to ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Or if you're on Facebook and we're Facebook friends, you can send me an instant message. Or you can call the Ringside Report office at 703-517-2155. Forget about it. All right, folks, we're now back and if you forgot who I am, I'm the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood, and this is the RSR video email bag show on the Ringside Report web TV channel. Now make sure you hit that button, whatever corner it's in, and subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. Spread the word. Okay? Now, let's get to the remainder of your questions on this sunny but snowy day. Next up. Bad Brad, you called out Deontay Wilder in your last show as he needs to be. I enjoy watching the young chap, but he is, as you said, lacking fundamentals without any doubt. Who do you think wins when he faces Ortiz in March? PT from London, England. PT, welcome back to the show. Pal, I know you. All right, give my best to the Queen Tower Beer Air a week from Thursday for a little tea and a little crumpets. And you know Deb works for BP, which you know is British Petroleum, which is from overseas. She works there in White Indiana at the BP Refinery. So, you know, we celebrate it with a little tea and a little crumpets. All right. I know I was going to get asked this question, Wilder versus Ortiz. I don't know if it's going to happen. It's been canceled, what, one, two times? Whatever. If it does happen and Ortiz comes in in shape and he can withstand the windmill. Isn't there a song called Windmills on My Mind? I forget who that is. Or something like that. Wasn't that big song? Any of my singers that watch the show... One middle of my mind, 70s hit. Tell me what it was. Can't think of the name off the top of my head. But if he can get away from that crack in power and he can come right down the middle, bada bing, bada boom, I think he's going to stop Deontay Wilder. And I think he's going to stop him in the fifth round or within five rounds. But I'm going to pick the fifth. Ortiz by TKO or knockout, either one. If Deontay wins the fight, I will give him his props because it's the first time. He's fought really a live body, okay? I did think that Bermain Stavine the first time 
would beat him, and he did, you know, go the distance with him, and he looked horrible. And the second time, forget about it. I don't even know. Bermain took a dive for all I for all I'm thinking in that match. So Ortiz in five, but I'm gonna pick the fifth round. TKO knockout over Deontay Windmill. Wow. Last question of the show goes to Bad Brand. I love your show and Ringside Report. Well, thank you, pal. I appreciate that. Please relay to your writer, Packy Boom Go Goldstein, that his column archive is bookmarked by me and I crack up every time I read it because he's hilarious while always telling it just like it is. Packy sure does. The love he has for your dad is very moving and I can tell he truly misses him and was honored to be part of his crew. All right, let me, whenever we talk about my dad, very emotional for me. They don't make men like your dad anymore and to see Packy on, <clears throat> Packy honoring him Every time is, as I said, moving to me. What well, is for me, too. And as I said earlier in the show, my 43rd year in or around the sport of boxing and because of my father. That's the reason why I love the sport. Turned me on to it in 1975. I saw a piece on you by Harold Koontz here in Tulsa last year. And he mentioned your dad got you into boxing. How did he do it and when did he start you? Scott B. from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, Scott B. from Tulsa, Oklahoma. You get the last question of the show. Thank you for acknowledging my dad. I'll make sure to send your sentiments to Packy. He's not on Facebook. Um, he doesn't do any social media at all. 80 plus years old, what do you expect? But, yes, that is true, and I said it twice now on the show. 1975, my father got me into the sport. In 1980, I went to Allen Park, which is still there, North Miami Beach, off 163rd Street. And I was actually going there to sign up for football. And I saw and heard, I should say, I heard, and I was like, what is that? I was captivated. It truly was. And I heard, bang, bang, bang. Well, turn the corner, there was a boxing gym when he first came in, which sadly went back a couple of years. It's now a weight room that's gone. And some great fighters came out of there, James Quick Tillis and others. And Angelo Dundee used to train the pros there in the day in the early 80s. And the amateurs like myself came in at night. So I went in there and I was captivated. Turned to my dad and I said, Dad, I don't want to play football. I want to do boxing. My dad looked at me very straight faced. And he said, look, Bradley, here's the deal. If you give it everything that you have, I will fully support you. And I did. From 1980 to 1983, I fought all over uh, Miami, North Miami Beach, Fort Lauderdale, and different places. Okay? Thoroughly enjoyed it. My dad was at every one of my fights ringside. Got some great coverage in the newspaper. Have a lot of great pictures. Wish I had some video. But hey, it is what it is. My last fight was in 1983 for a kid named Ronnie Williams. Dropped him in the second round with a beautiful right hand because right hand was my punch. He got up, finished the round, came out in the third round, tried to get him out and I couldn't. Won a decision and that was it. My dad, I was starting to put more emphasis on boxing than I was my grades. And my dad said, we can't have that because school was so important. So I still followed it and that's how I got into it. And that's how my dad supported me. And my dad and I would go to a lot of pay-per-view fights. We were at the uh, Dania Highlight for um, Leonard versus Hearns 1. We saw uh, Tommy Hearns versus Virgil Hill in June of 91. I came home from the war, Desert Shield, Desert Storm. I surprised my dad. We went to Lorenzo's Market in North Miami Beach and we watched pay-per-view. Got a great picture of Angelo in between my dad and I because they were friends. And I interviewed Angelo years later for my book. So that's how I got into it. Scott B from Tulsa, Oklahoma, my best. You know, that used to be my stopping grounds up until late last year. All right, folks, that's another RSR video email bag show in the can, as we always say, forget about it. And as Frank Sinatra say, so eloquently, so long ago, the best is yet to come. Bad brand.